Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now, I have been promising you for a while that I'm going to start showing you some of the simple programming required to make a simple game in the basic programming language of the Zenex Spectrum, or in this case, the Spectrum from Retro Games Limited. Now, just let me get this out there before I begin. I am not fluent in the basic language whatsoever. I have basically been learning this as I've been making these games that I've been showcasing on my channel. So I'm a beginner, just as much as you may be if you're watching this. So if there is somebody watching this in the comments who knows all this, then I apologize, but we've all got to learn some at some point in our lives. But if you know a better way or improvements, then please comment below, share your experiences, share your knowledge, and we can all learn off one another. So anyway, that's enough of that. That's my little disclaimer out of the way. Um, if we go B close, whoops, B close. There we go. So I'm programming today in 48K uh, basic. That's what I like to use. So my theory was if I could get something to move on the screen using the keyboard, then I'm nearly there to making a game. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to dive straight in and show you how to move something on the screen by using the keyboard. So first of all, I'm assuming that you all know what the print function does. If you don't, then print. Hello. Whoops, hell. Print hello. We'll put that on the screen, yeah? Now, what about if I wanted to put that in the middle of the screen? Well, we do print at 10, say about 15. Hello. Now, 10 is our vertical drop. So that runs from 0 to 21. Our horizontal is 0 to 31. So there you go. Now it's near enough in the middle of the screen there. So bearing that in mind, when I start a program, what I like to do, and I'm going to start this at 100. And the reason why I'm doing that is because on the next episode, I'm going to add something else. And on the next episode of this video of this series, I'm going to add something else. So I'm basically going to be making a game step by step. So if you guys watching this want to copy me, then we're basically making a game together and you, and you can put in the comments what you'd like to happen, if you like, what you'd like the game to be about. We're just going to make something very simple, not too complicated, just to, you know, just for a little bit of fun. So Y is what I like to use for my vertical drop. So I'm going to put Y equal 10, yeah? And then I'm going to put let X equal 15. Okay, remember when I had the hello in the middle of the screen? Well, that's basically those coordinates there, 10 and 15. All right, and that is where our character is going to sit. All right, now I'm going to jump to 120, and I'll show you why later, because I'm going to be coming back as, um, as the program progresses. So, in keys is what we're going to use. I like to... Um, condense the word in keys down into a string value. So I'm going to give the A string value the in keys command. And what that does is it's just going to condense the program down a bit. So when the spectrum is running through the program, reading the lines, it's just, read, it's just going to read A strings rather than in keys. You see what I mean? It's just compressing that down slightly. That's, that's how I assume it works anyway. So in keys is what we use when we want to identify a button being pushed on the keyboard, okay? So whatever button we push now on the spectrum is what we're going to be asking it to do. So if that makes sense. So if, no, A strings, not C strings, equals, P, 
which is going to be our right command. So that will be moving the carrot to right. And I'm going to go and x, because this is our horizontal. Bear with me. I'm trying to find <laughs> the joys of using the original Spectrum keyboard. It's trying to find the, um, the, 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 the commands on the keys. So that is part of the why I wanted the Spectrum to relive those past memories of trying to find the keys. Now I'm, I've put 31 then. If you remember our horizontal line, 31 is at the very end of the right hand side of the screen on the horizontal. So if our character gets to 31, I'm just going to basically tell it to come back, sort of, you know, to stop. It won't veer off the end of the screen. So let x equal x plus 1. Okay. So there, I've given that the command that if it's less than 31, then move. If it's over 31, then it won't move. 140. If a strings equals right we're beginning to find the commands on the keyboard now no more silly mistakes and x is more than zero then let x equal x minus one so there's our two commands for left and right okay now now let's do the up and down command. So 150 if A strings equals Q. Now for Q, whoop, we want that to go up. So and we're going to be using the Y because that's our vertical. So we're moving it up on the vertical line. Y is so uh, Q is up, so we want to be, is uh, more than zero. I think I got, if, the good thing about this, if I make mistakes as I go, you'll see what I've done wrong and we'll be able to correct it together. I'm hoping I've got that right. So that will be minus one because we're going up. Plus one is when we're coming down. So we're going up, so that should, that should be right. 160, if A strings, and I'm sorry if this is painful watching this, but we've all got to start somewhere, and hopefully you may learn something, and I might learn something, if anyone is giving me some stick in the comments. So that will be 21 this time, because it's our limit. Uh, then let y equal y and that will be plus one so there's all our instructions okay p right o left q up a down now we want to put our character on the screen okay so if we go 170 print at we have to put the y option and the x so the Y option is our vertical. Remember we put let Y equal 10 and our X is the horizontal. Remember we put let X equal 15. So that is where our character is gonna be. So let's use the character, um, what should we do, A. We use the character A. So we're gonna be moving A around the screen, yeah? Now if we go 180, go to 120 and we go run we've now got our a if i push p it's moving to the right if i push left it's moving to the left up down and just to show that it's not rearing off the screen now i hear you screaming to me i don't want it to leave a trail behind it well let me show you how to get around that now there's two ways you can do this the first easiest way I would say if we put one, two, five, print at y dash x, and we just put a space there. 
So now when we run the uh, the program, you'll see it's flashing. Okay. Now I don't like that flickering, and I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. But that's the easiest way, the quickest way to probably get rid of it is just to do what I've done there. And what it's doing, it's because I've asked it to put a space there, it's, de it's deleting as it goes. It's putting a space and then it's moving, putting a space, moving, space, moving, so it's always deleting it. Now, what about if I wanted to go a different route and I didn't want it to be flickering? Now, this might be something that some of you may not know. So, listen very carefully. I'll show you how to get around this. Now, the reason I started at 100 and didn't do 110, I'm now going to put 110. Let y1 equal y. Okay? And then I'm going to put let x1 equal x. So we're, we're creating... Oh, I'll put it at 100. I'll put it at 10. Sorry, that should have been 110. Let's just correct that. So the reason why I've done that is it's it's creating another set of variables linked to our y and x. So it's basically copying it. I'm going to get rid of 1, 2, 5. I'm now going to get rid of that. So now at 165, we're going to put if y one is more or less than y or x1 is more or less than x then print at y1 stroke x1 and that's our space And then we need to put in 175, let y1 equal y, let x1 equal x, just so that it returns it back. Okay, now if I run that now, as you can see, it's no longer flickering. And it's stopping where I want it to stop. So it's not diving off the end of the screen. And that's basically it. So now I've got a character moving around on the screen. So there's the little program. Now what I would suggest, if you've got a notepad, it comes in very handy. Because if you're using the retro games, the Spectrum, there's no print facility on it. You can't plug a printer into it, unfortunately. So I've always got a little notepad next to me and I like to jot things down as I'm going. And it just, it's just good because, you know, you can revisit stuff and um, make sure you're doing it right and make notes and what have you. In the next episode, I'm going to show you um, how we create a collision point. So when we move our little character A around, when we hit something, we'll lose a life or something fancy will happen anyway. So there, I'll just leave that up on the screen so you can um, jot that down. And on the next episode, like I said, I will show you how to do some collision. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been of help. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you know better or there's a better way of doing it, then by all means, please let me know. I shall also in the next video introduce the joystick into this. So I'll do a couple of alterations to that uh, program we've already done and I'll show you how you introduce the IN31 command which is our Kempstone joystick command. Okay, so I'll add that on the next episode as well. But that's enough for this one. I don't want to overload you too much. There is the program to move an object around the screen. I hope it's been useful. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the content so far. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.